Yes. I'm getting tired of all these people. of the Alvin Independent School District to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. You all please rise for the invocation by Ms. Tanini and stay standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father in Heaven, we come before thee this evening with gratitude for the privilege that we have to serve the students of the Alvin Independent School District. We're grateful for the privilege that we have to serve the citizens in our communities and grateful for the good schools that we have to send our children to. Father, as we open this meeting, we pray for thy spirit to be with us. We ask that thou will guide us and direct us to do those things that will be pleasing unto thee and that will be best for those whom we serve. We ask for thy blessing to be upon us. And again, we're grateful to thee and give all glory to thee. And this we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the flag I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible.
January is School Board Recognition Month. We would like to express our immense gratitude to the Alvin ISD trustees for their continued support of our students. In honor of School Board Recognition Month, the Alvin ISD principals would like to make a special presentation to our trustees. Do you want to put your It's a kitchen handbook and cookies. Um, cookies. 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 Okay, I'm just going to use my natural loud voice. Um, Wait, I get to eat. Peter Gift Packers, you will find it in the next 15 hands by Audra Penn. It is the story of a little boy and his mother preparing for the first day of school. He has invited the students that attend Alvin ISD to help us read the book. Tonight, we have the following special guest. My name is Eric. Lois Needy, Nicole Walsh, my mother.
please, may I stay home with you? Mr. Acton took gesture by his hand to drag with her on the years. Sometimes we all have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently. Even if they seem strange, he carried her, but she will love school once he's done. Mm -hmm. Read your book and swing on your swing. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that will make your night at school seem as warm and cozy as your day is at home. Dexter was glad to be already in his cave and less interested. Do you think the kind of people are very loyal to each other? I don't know if you were told by your mother. And if she knew where you were from her, it's called the prison. I'll show you, Miss Cartoon, took Chester's <coughs> left hand and spread open his tiny fingers into the same pan. Leaning toward, she kisses Chester right in the middle of his palm. Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand up his arm into his heart. Even his silky black neck tingled with a special warmth. Mrs. Cartoon smiled. Now, she told Chester, whenever you feel lonely and need a little love you from home, just press your hand to your cheek and think, Mommy loves you, Mommy loves you. And that very kiss will jump to your face and fill you with twisty warm spots. She took Chester's hand and carefully wrapped his finger around the kiss. Now do be careful not to lose it, she teased him. But don't worry, when you open your hand and wash your feet, I promise the kiss will stop. <coughs> Chester loved his kissing hand. Now he knew his mother's love would go with him wherever he went even to school. That night, Chester stood in front of the school and looked thoughtful. Suddenly, he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me your hand, she told him. Chester took his mother's hand and then forward and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward and kissed the center of her hand. Now you have a kissing hand, too, he told her. You take it gently and fast, because I love you. Mr. Arkin watched Chester scamper across a tree limb and enter school. At, and as the hoot, hoot, hoot owl rang in the new school year, she pressed her left hand to her cheek and smiled with warmth. Uh, Chester's kiss filled her heart with special words. Chester loves you. It sang Chester loves you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Again, we would like to thank you for giving your hearts and hands for all of us in Alvin ISD. Thank you for freedom tonight. Y'all did a great job. Can you walk up behind and go go stand behind you? I have a niece your that's special your needs. <laughs> Great grandfather. The greatest of grandfathers. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Don't get carried away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't come up the side of it. There you go. <laughs> Good job, guys. Good job, but you can watch this for all student accommodations. Hey.
A commendation is recommended for the following students who have distinguished themselves because of their outstanding accomplishments. Alvin ISD hosted our 2013 UIL One Act Play Contest on Saturday, December 7th in the Alvin High School Auditorium. The contest was judged by Mr. Kelly Parker, who serves as the professor of McLean Community College. Mr. Parker was extremely impressed by the performances of our young actors in Alvin ISD. Fairview Junior High received first place for their top performance of No Fading Star. From the cast of Fairview Junior High, we have Emily Peterson, Rachel Hoffman, Ryan Shaw, Clayton Guiling, Jordan Oxier, Jeremy Greer, Nikki Windorf, Matthew Burton, Kalia Schultz, Callie Green, Joey Gurka, Hannah Stewart, Tristan Herman, Michael Fontenot, Aaron Mata. Also supporting the cast, we have stage manager Ingrid Doles. Leo Reyes, Sound Justin Pick, and the cast was under the direction of Adrian Whitfield and Assistant Director Melissa Brown. Parents, y'all feel free to come on down and get better pictures. Yes, don't be shy with your cameras. Come, come join me up here and take as many photos as you'd like. The following Alvin ISD Junior High students made the Regent Performing Band for Alvin ISD. From Alvin Junior High, we have Jacob Mangione on trombone. Uh, he made second chair wind symphony. From Harvey Junior High, we have Catherine Custer, clarinet, third chair wind symphony. From Fairview Junior High, we have Jake Windorf, who plays euphonium, uh, first, and he made first chair wind ensemble. Also, Leo Reyes, euphonium, second chair symphonic winds. Jose Ramirez plays the tuba in first chair wind symphony. Nathan King on the tuba second chair symphonic winds. And Kobe Roten made third chair symphonic winds with percussion.
All right, can we get these students together with the trustees? Yeah. 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 We're going to get Kevin back to the photo by yourself. All right, thank you, students, from Fairview. <laughs> Catherine is representing Harvey. We want to make sure that she has the photo uh, just for Harvey to use and highlight their success. <laughs> from Nolan Ryan Junior High, we have Mike Gennaro on the flute. He made a third chair wind ensemble. She. So tell me your name. Micah. Micah, I apologize. Micah, wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations for your accomplishment, Micah. Grant Lloyd on the flute, third chair symphonic winds. Evelyn Pye plays the oboe, second chair wind ensemble. <laughs> Bethany Lynn with the clarinet, first chair wind symphony. <laughs> ben Faw with the clarinet, second chair symphonic wind. <laughs> Armand Chotsky, alto sax, first chair wind symphony. Michael Sines, baritone sax, first chair wind symphony. <laughs> Daniel Dancer, trumpet, first chair wind ensemble. <laughs> Ryan Wynn, trumpet player, second chair symphonic winds. <laughs> Anna Regresado, euphonium, second chair wind ensemble. Josh Villanueva, percussion, first chair wind ensemble. Second Chair, Symphonic Winds. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. How about another round of applause? recently came together to show support for the Shelly Garza Alvin ISD ACC Can't Feed the Hungry Food Drive this past December. Thanks in large part to our schools and Alvin ISD families, this year's food drive was the largest in history. The food drive is a collaborative e effort between many individuals and groups in our community. However, a few individuals are particularly instrumental. We recommend a board accommodation be given to those influential individuals. We would like to recognize Coach Gary Kaufman of Alvin Community Co College for being the driving force that continues to make this food drive a reality. We would also like to express our appreci appreciation to Alvin Community College for their support of staff and facilities. Coach Kaufman. <laughs> We would also like to recognize Pastor Don Anderson and the Alvin Church of Christ for their collective support of the food drive.
We would also like to present a very special <clears throat> board commendation in the memory of Ms. Shelley Garza. Ms. Garza was a longtime educator in Alvin ISD and the namesake of the community food drive. She started to collect food items for those in need, and thanks to her vision and efforts, hundreds of families benefit each year. This evening, we had anticipated to have her daughter and husband uh, with us. Unfortunately, they had an, uh, an emergency and they weren't able to be here. However, we will make sure that uh, Jennifer Garza Bibb and Clem Garza receive this commendation on her behalf. Coach Kaufman, Pastor Anderson, would you like to share a few words about the food drive? Thank you so much. This is deeply humbling and a great honor. The partnership with ACC Can Feed the Hungry and Alvin Independent School District Shelley Garza Memorial Food Drive actually came together in 2009. Shelley had unfortunately passed away in September of that year. Then in December, Carol Nelson, the principal at Alvin Elementary, along with a uh, teacher, Mindy Davis, contacted me about partnering. So it began December 2009, our partnership. And every year, more and more AISD schools have come on board. This year, thanks to the involvement of Dr. Brent and his passion to keep this going, this year, every Alvin Independent School District campus participated and gave greatly, and the volunteer support was incredible. I would like to point out that last year, both Manuel High School and Alvin High School competed against each other, and both schools contributed over a ton of food. This year, six AISD campuses contributed over a ton of food, and the leader of the pack, Interestingly enough, was Mark Twain Elementary. They can they contributed over three thousand pounds of food. The support by AISD, the support by AISD and your enthusiasm. We are helping a lot more families than we've ever helped, and now we're looking for ways. The west part of the district's involved, but we need to make it a little more accessible for them when we do the breakfast with Santa. So we're working on plans in that direction so we can continue to expand and help more families. Thank you so much and God bless you. I, am, uh, I have no business following that. <laughs> you, uh, you humble me tonight by giving me a certificate but I'd like to tell you about the real heroes of this food drive. They're the principals, faculty, administrators, the thousands upon thousands of students and staff members of your schools that helped to make this possible. In 2009, my first year here in Alvin, this food drive, after 20-something years, had served 50 families. They were ecstatic about the fact that they served 50 families that were underprivileged and needed help that year. This year we served over 300. And as Coach mentioned, it was well over 20,000 pounds of food. But may I share something with you that the Apostle Paul said, which is a major concern in our country today. Paul said in Philippians, he was writing to a church that was infighting and tearing each other apart and making accusations against each other. And he said, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in all things consider others better than yourself. Look not to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Ladies and gentlemen of the board and members of the audience, I would suggest to you tonight the biggest problem we have in our country today is a word called selfishness. And it's through acts like this. They don't count on your efficiency test that the state makes your students take. But they make good citizens out of them. And they teach valuable lessons. That other people are more important than your other students. And it gives them a moral opportunity to do something for other people. And I know Daniel was there 
Coach Dr. Branch was there. There were hundreds of students, faculty, staff, administrators who were there who were shopping for groceries and sorting cans and they've got more green beans than the Kroger warehouse has got. <laughs> they did it all with a smile in their heart because they were helping people. And we thank you for being a part of this. And we thank you for helping the people in this community. This is a great school district. It's a great community. May God be with you, and may we continue to find ways to serve people and teach valuable life lessons to our kids. The difference will be felt in the future generations. Thank you. Pastor Anderson, Coach Kaufman, thank you again for your support for being here with us tonight. Also, thank you to the countless Alvin ISD staff members that made this year's food drive an overwhelming success. Thank you. Hard to follow that. Uh, uh, Dr. Grant, uh, Board of Trustees, and uh, honored guests, we're, we're very pleased tonight to present to you the uh, graduating class of the 2012 Alvin ISD Aspiring Administrators Academy. Uh, a little over two years ago, Dr. Brent charged the leadership team with creating and designing and creating an academy that would uh, build the capacity of uh, our staff and, and grow them into the leaders that we needed for our schools and our students. And I can tell you over the past two years, where's Ms. Alvarez? Right so, uh, Ken Alvarez and I have, have uh, been involved in this work for the last two years. We've started uh, our third cohort. Uh, it's now the uh, Aspiring Leaders Academy. We wanted to expand that. Um, but it's really an opportunity for uh, teachers in our in our uh, in our organization to continue to grow uh, professionally and to experience um, how we run the district system. Uh, every facet of our district and organization is involved in this effort. It's not just a dual effort from uh, human resources and professional learning, but all of our principals, uh, all of our support staff, uh, directors of different departments uh, have been instrumental in helping and assisting in growing. Uh, Men and women, and uh, they've opened their doors. We've had uh, academy members shadow students. Uh, they've shadowed other administrators, and they've also shadowed different departments. They've participated in recruiting fairs. Uh, they've been exposed. That's a very deep conversation. I know that I've had on my soapbox quite a bit in our academy. I apologize for that now. Uh, you know, it, it, it's been such a great opportunity for us to uh, to, to grow our own. And, and I would ask that we have a commitment to that. And, and I'm very, very proud of the work that they've done, the commitment that they've shown. They, they go, uh, they come here once a month for two hours a night uh, for, for a whole calendar year. Uh, and uh, they have to go through a, like a, an application process and an interview. And, uh, and so we really try to, to make sure that their experience is, is worthwhile and that they, uh, that they gain some uh, leadership skills and, and attitude from that also. And so at this time, I'm very pleased to present to you the uh, 2012 Aspiring Academy, and we will present them each with a certificate of completion. Thank you guys again. We enjoy serving with you and learning with you, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing you continue to grow as we enjoy this work. Uh, Charles Bagger. Benu John, Julie Kohler, <laughs> Julie Kohler, Brooke Kramer, Teresa Lair, <laughs> Quentin Land.
Dicey Muris. <laughs> Julie Oje. Laura Peterson. Glenn <laughs> Cora Rogers. <laughs> Jamie Salka. <laughs> David Sauer. <laughs> Stephen Stapleton. <laughs> Cynthia Starkey. John Yancey. And Aaron Slutt. Accept the recommendations, accommodations. So moved. Motion by Ms. Kalini. We have a second. Second. All in favor? I should carry seven up. Are there any other questions? Next we have the consent agenda items. Is there any that anyone wishes <coughs> wish to pull? Uh, item D, please. Item D. Are there any others to be pulled? <coughs> Do I hear a motion to approve consent agenda items A, B, C, and E? So moved. A motion by Ms. Stringer. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Harris. All in favor? Motion carries 7 0. Next we have D. Request to consider the approval of professional service agreement. All right, here we go. Um, Susan Wilson, Director of Business Service, requests the following professional service agreement with Philip Welch to be considered was anticipated to exceed $25,000. There will be no increase in the budget as the savings from vacant positions will cover the budget portion of this request. Um, Mr. Welch will be working on the following projects in the Alvin IC 4C's business training, capital cash management programs, uh, new employee workflow systems, Alvin budgetary pre budget preparation for personnel, salary market study, stipend study, and also oversee and manage projects related to fiscal year 2014 goals. Uh, Ms. Wilson's here to answer any questions the board may have. Our recommendation is that board approve the pre professional service agreement with Philip Welch. We have a motion to approve the professional service agreement with Philip Welch. So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Stringer. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Matoyer. Comments and questions? Uh, I have a few questions. The uh, the task that uh, Mr. Welch will be performing, who does that currently? 
Ms. Wilson's been doing a, a lot of that work and we are changing her responsibilities with the retirement of Mr. King. And Susan, if you want to fill in any specifics that you'd like to explain further. The what? Our love on our employees. That's all <laughs> because as a new employee comes in, what, what we found is sometimes they don't have all the information. So one of the things that uh, Mr. Welch will be working on for us is creating something that we can hand to each employee and, and love on our employees. <coughs> and so the training uh, system that you see outlined there are training pieces that we have done this way that we want to be able to, to change our model, be able from the business perspective to uh, provide additional services. How much, uh, how many vacant positions do we have? Or, okay, and so we don't know then how much money savings we have from oh, vacant where positions. the savings are coming from from the vacant positions is that what your question is mm -hmm. okay where the savings the the, the salaries we're currently not funding Absolutely. yes we, the, the savings that are referred to in that memo were savings from the uh, dr whitbeck position and uh, dr Mr. king's position and expenditures that we didn't spend out of several Okay. And then finally, how much is the contract for? It's over 25000 Absolutely. So? It's um, 54000 I believe. I, we could go back and look at the actual amount. Can provide that. that that's a, uh, uh, okay. So this is a contract, so you say, Okay. So it's fifty four thousand to June thirtieth. Exactly. Does this include work that he did in the fall for the district? The fifty four thousand? It does not. Okay. The, the work that he did in the fall for us um, was twenty five thousand dollars basically in the fall. Okay. And where we're going with staffing for the, it's not a permanent position. And as we are going forward with our staffing for the, for the 2014 budget year, any position needs that will continue to evolve after Mr. King's retirement and us creating, replacing the, the, the CFO and the CEO and who will do the work in the business office from any shifts in that situation, those positions will be recommended to the board. So this is not a position impacting the 2014 staffing for next year. This is a, a temporary position to help them get the work done to prepare the 2014 budget and all the other programs. And then we would recommend staffing from there. And that staffing recommendation, I believe, comes around March, April. March 27th will be the budget workshop. Okay. And so, so what is the, uh, the term that we're talking about? Uh, he hasn't started yet, correct? That's correct. So it's... So for the 54000 what is the contract term? It would be tomorrow is approved through June 30th. June 30th? I don't have any more questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 You're doing math. I, 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 I did do math. Are there any other questions or comments? All in favor of approving the professional service agreement with Philip Welch? Motion carries 7 0. Next, we have the request to consider the approval of adoption of Texas High Performing Schools resolution. The resolution that you see before you is, uh, and uh, Daniel Combs and Jeff Burke and several of our other staff, Dr. Palos have worked on, uh, and Daryl Alexander as well, have worked on the application for this process. Uh, 
Glencora Rogers. I didn't want to leave her out as well. Anyway, we briefly discussed this before about the High Performance Schools Consortium that uh, consisted of 23 school districts brought together to research, explore, develop, and implement an assessment and accountability framework that is not over-reliant on high-stakes testing. The purpose of the consortium is to improve student learning through innovation in four areas, development of high-priority learning standards, use of multiple assessments to measure learning, integration of technology into student learning, and creation of robust community-based accountability systems. Alvin ISD's participation in this work as a consortium associate will enable our district to share ideas, resources, and results with all transformation partner districts. We will have the benefit of learning with innovative leaders and other districts that support our vision. Basically, this work is already supporting the work that we have started, and joining this consortium will allow us to pull together some resources with these other school districts. This works highly supportive of the um, of the uh, House Bill 5 work, uh, especially the robust community-based accountability systems that we'll be having discussions about as we continue to evolve over the next several years. And so we're recommending that board approve the resolution supporting the Texas High Performance Schools Consortium uh, as presented. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution supporting the Texas High Performance Schools Consortium? So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Matoyer. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Harris. Comments or questions? I have a question. With this um, work that sounds wonderful, is there any travel related cost to that to go to the meetings or any, anything like that? There's, uh, there is some travel cost, but it's not exorbitant amount. It should be funded in our standard travel budgets. Thank you. And how often will they meet? Well, our, our next meeting is, uh, our initial meeting will be at the end of our midwinter conference, which we're already attending. So that's already a built-in cost. And then at that initial meeting, this initial, will be the initial meeting for new schools joining the consortium work. Mm -hmm. Basically, what you're seeing is the majority of the school district that adopted the testing resolution that we adopted a while back that have been working in this work um, are joining the consortium. And so they've, they've opened it up for new districts to join. And, and therefore, uh, they'll give us a meeting schedule. But it, it's not that often, meaning we all have other work to do. So I wouldn't say any more than, uh, you know, four times a year. I got a question. Are there more more are joining us all the time? Yes, sir. A significant number of districts are joining. Um, I want. I don't know how many new districts there are joining. I know that in the last conference call I received, or I was a part of, there are there are many joining, and I can give the board that information at our midwinter meetings to let you know how many have joined. I said initially there were 23. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming by that now there's more. Yes, sir. They're opening up for other yes. districts to join. No, there'll be more. There's a lot more. No, yes, this. It's a strong, uh, I think it's a strong group of districts that are trying to help move towards uh, better learning standards that uh, show more than just how well a kid can pass a test, but other standards of measure that are accepted nationally as well, such as SAT and ACT. So uh, different standards and, and uh, hopefully deeper learning opportunities for our kiddos. And we'll, we'll provide the board an update of these meetings. I know our team will be more than happy to let you know when we meet. We can give you a meeting schedule. Uh, we can report to the board at the following board meeting after each meeting about the process because we definitely want you to know how that's going. And can you assure this board that Common Core is not a, a part of this? <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's not adopted in the state of Texas. I understand that. Yes, ma'am. But ma it's coming to Texas through independent school districts. So I want to ensure our district that that is not no, happening that's here not in what we're proposing okay so we're going on record for that right <laughs> yes ma'am we've not proposed right. the common core thank you appreciate it are there any other comments or questions all in favor of approving the resolution supporting the texas high performance school consortium motion carries 7-0 next we have the request to consider approval of TASB update 98 <clears throat> Our, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is our first reading of TASB Update 98. Um, the board requested that we hold off to have the first reading this month, and so we're there. Uh, please know that there is um, the only action really you're taking this month is, month is basically saying that you've received the update, and uh, we are looking at it, and you're accepting the first reading. And any questions you have over policies, we will be happy to research that information and get the board and weekly as soon as possible. For example, if there's specific policies you'd like us to research for you or, or you'd like to inquire about tonight, if you'll identify those policies or you can identify them to us tomorrow in email or whenever, and we'll start sending those out each week in our weekly updates. 
uh, and we can always discuss further at that point before we have the final adoption, which would be the following month. And if and so basically the first reading is a, an acceptance. And if there's any specific policies you want us to research between now and final adoption, we'll take those policies from you and we'll get you information. We have a motion to approve the first reading of TASB policy update 98 as presented. So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Stringer. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Tonini. Comments or questions? Yes, I'll go ahead and uh, I would like for y'all to do some research on uh, the following four uh, local policies, that is BBE, DH, DNA, and EIA, and uh, you want me to give you any the specifics? You want me to do that just in an email? You can email. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. BBE, DH, DNA, and EIA. Mm -hmm. All right. Correct. Are there any others? I believe I had, I don't remember the one I had. It was a fundraising question. Yes, they, they were looking at that one. Okay. I'll get it. There's one in there. It's been too long since I've looked at it to remember which one it was. But there's one that says you cannot use any school time for fundraising at all. Yeah, and right. to me, that eliminates all book fairs, all any of that. And so we need to adjust that policy a bit. Any other questions, comments? All in favor of approving the first reading of TASB policy update 98? Motion carries 7 out. Next, we have the request to consider the approval of 2014 15 secondary course request. All right, the secondary campuses request the courses listed in the attached memo be approved the 1415 uh, course guides. And we recommend the board approve the secondary course request for the 2014 2015 school year. And our staff, Dr. Velos, who's sitting there all alone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then there was one. Anyway, <laughs> is uh, here for any questions? I'm sorry. <laughs> she will. Was that a foul? <laughs> Is uh, there any questions the board might have? <laughs> yes. Um, well, 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 hold on. I, I, I move that we uh, approve the 2014-15 secondary course request as presented. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Lansford. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Stringer. Now you comment. Okay. <laughs> um, that it's just a ton of them. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about how that will be implemented? Teachers hiring, there's a lot of really specific things. How's that all going to work? What's your plan? As of now, without having House Bill 5 requirements, we're not sure exactly where that's going to go. We have, we're offer, we're asking for um, options. Of these courses, probably maybe 15 will be offered, and we'll do it based on student needs. And as the time goes on and we see what students sign up for, we'll offer those later on the uh, down the line certifications all teachers will be looking for certified teachers that are highly qualified as well um, like I said these are just options that we're asking for approval so that we can get students a plan in place okay so are you going to do a student survey to determine where their interest registration lies? okay student registration do you and introduce our anything our CPE program our CPE program um, she's identified some of the classes already okay. as well as our secondary stuff as well so we're going to offer them and see who signs up? Christine. Through these courses, we picked out about a dozen to 15, somewhere in that area, that will actually go into the course guides so students will have the option. We're still awaiting information from House Bill, from, from PBA on what, what the requirements for the endorsements are going to be. Uh, we expect to have that sometime late January. Uh, that information just has not come out yet. We have these courses in here for approval. They are all TEA recognized courses. They all have teams numbers. Uh, in the event that TEA comes up and says, throws us a curve that we're not anticipating, we have the course approval that we can move forward with that. 
We're not going to offer all of these. No, ma'am. Not, not, not this year. <laughs> Christina, would you like to speak to some of those? Um, just as Kevin said, what we did um, when we began the process of looking at um, directors' school career sets, uh, we all sat at the table, all districts, and we began to think how could we better prepare for what would be unknown that we're waiting for in February. And so we kind of made a consensus that by bringing forth to our board the entire COTT table, which is just the police code for all PTT courses, that it would be a better choice to be more prepared, but more prepared, so that whenever it is time for us to plug in those courses and we know in February the final information, we'll just be able to take from that table. We predict that only about, just like Kevin said, 12 to 15 of these courses will actually go forward in the course guide this school year, but it was never our intention to put all 130 of the courses out there. Um, we basically use the information from our student data that we record every year from our Explore exam. And so from that information, we're able to kind of pinpoint where our student interests lie, and we use that to build that into our career path <coughs> for what we believe will be the most viable courses. I got a question. Yes, sir. Are these courses that you put in the guide, whoever 15th, have you, do you have in mind some kind of number to make one of those courses? Uh, um, I mean, if five people sign up for a course, you won't offer that? Uh, correct. Just as all course registration, if, there, if the number is too low, we will not offer that course. And most of the courses that you're going to see in the course guide really reflects on the ninth grade group because they're the target group for endorsement track. And so it was a lot of courses that we've never really had a principal's or a beginning basic level course for them. And we wanted to provide them the opportunity to kind of get in a course, get their feet wet a little bit before they really have to choose their endorsement track for the rest of their four years. How do you introduce all these different courses to the students? And you say ninth grade, this is really based upon how do you, I mean, is there a presentation in the evenings about opportunities that they can take? How do you get this information to the kids so they know and, and they know what to look for and what they might be interested in. We market, and uh, part of our marketing for our programs is this is something that we do each year. Um, we have our department heads from each of our high schools go down to the uh, junior high school and start talking in their principal against the department of finance class about the different courses. So they are able to kind of familiarize themselves with the 16 career cluster. We also have student interest surveys that they also um, are able to take in that course. And so those teachers all throughout the year are talking about high school and marketing the program for us. We also have some scheduled elective fairs that are coming up on February 6th, which we're inviting the whole district to come out to, to our high school. And there you'll see all the PTE tables will be there and marketing materials will be passed out to the courses as well as the instructors will be there to answer any questions that parents may have. Very good. Thank you. We've also got paramedics going on. In fact, two of our junior highs have a paramedic tonight okay. uh, that are going on where um, several people were there and talking with the parents about how to apply, what the expectations are, what the endorsements are, and what the last one is. What we anticipate what the last one is. And we, we schedule meetings with each one of our junior highs uh, as well as both as well on. When you Finally whittle it down to your 12 or 15. Can we get a final list of which ones are going in? Yes. So when you market this to the kids, are they seeing the entire list that we see this evening? Oh, no, ma'am. They're only seeing the courses that we have selected, the 12 or 15 that will go forward in our, this year's course guide. I mean, I'm sorry, next year's school year's course guide. Okay. So do we have um, some sort of plan to or are you working on an agreement? For example, there's um, firefighting or um, local and city government, something like that. Do you have a plan to work with to have a hands-on or is it all going to be classroom book work? Um, currently, we are not offering the firefighter course per se, um, but the plan is with all of our career tech courses, there is a classroom component, which is just the lectures that go right. through the basics, but all of our courses have a hands-on component. Okay. So any course that we would propose, you both see the, you see both sides of that curriculum because all, most of the teachers will be classroom work. Right. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Okay. All in favor of approving the secondary course request for 2014-2015.
Motion carries 7 up. Next, we have a request to consider the approval of purchase of ION contract management software. All right, our director of purchasing, Ms. Mickey Dietrich, is requesting the purchase of the ION bidding contract management software, which is currently an approved vendor under the Buy Board Cooperative. This contract will be for five years, so the purchase that will also include any maintenance and upgrades made to the software over the term of the contract. The total expenditure over the five-year contract is $128,000, which will be covered under our capital controlled supplies, and it will be paid over a five-year term. So we're recommending that the board approve the ION technology software purchase as presented. And of course, Ms. Dietrich and, and, Ms. Dietrich and other staff members are here to answer any questions. We have a motion to approve the ION technology software as presented. So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Stringer. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Harris. Comments or questions? I have a question. Mickey, um, I see that it's $128,000. Um, is this t uh, price inclusive of any training for all your staff yes. and technical assistance, like a help desk? And do you, it's, it's inclusive of that? It's inclusive. Yes. What they do is they come down uh -huh. and they'll train our staff. Uh -huh. um, they'll also help, us, help me implement it. So they so come down here. Our There's... work is going to have to take okay. place before we're going to actually be able to go online. So they come down here. There's no travel or anything. No. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So after it's up and running and going smoothly, and then the five-year contract, is that is this something that we will need to renew? Yes, ma'am. If, if we like it and things are running the way it should be. I've been tracking on the software since 2009, and it's really been growing in the state of Texas. Um, like the buy board and TASB, some of their um, cooperatives, they're using them as well. So I feel like it's a really secure piece of software that within five years, we're going to be all technology based as it is, you know, that's the way we're, our world is growing. And so by then I think we'll probably be renewing it. Okay. Is there, do you know if there's a difference in cost being a startup now compared to five years of renewal? Um, no ma'am, I really do not. Uh, okay. Right now what we're doing is we're trying to get in there. It's 128000 They could break it up any way we wanted to. Okay. And so we're just taking the big lump at the very beginning and then squashing it down a little bit. Okay. Thank and you. And the balance is a part of your budget for the next few years? Yes, ma'am. Is support included in that 128000 Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Good. No support fee. I would be calling them for anything and everything. Yes, Great. Is there any other comments or questions? All in favor? Motion carries 7 up. Next, we have a request to consider the approval of construction manager at risk for Alvin Jr. High. Okay, uh, the construction manager at risk method of construction requires a contractor to submit qualifications for the district to evaluate and score. After review and evaluation by building programs and the project architect, Stuart Builders has satisfied the evaluation criteria and submitted pricing that offers the best value to the district. So we're recommending that board approval, uh, board approve Stuart Builders, the construction manager at risk for Alvin Junior High expansion and renovation and authorize superintendent to review and ex execute the final negotiated contract. Do I have a motion to approve Stuart Builders as a construction manager at risk for Alvin Junior High expansion and renovation and authorize the superintendent to review and execute the final negotiated contract? So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Stringer. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Tonini. Comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion carries 7 up. Next, we have a request to consider the approval of employment and resignations. All right. Um, we have we have the little either my I'm a little no, off on my. I don't have it either. Yeah, mm -mm. I don't see it in this agenda either. Uh, the last thing we have on our agenda on electronic version is the resignation, retirement, reassignment, and administrator positions. And so what we have right now is um, I do not have an action item for number 14 at this time to share with the board. I know, but I don't have 14, which, see what I'm saying? Yeah. I 
an oversight? But, yeah, but yours does, but yeah, but yours does. Do you, do you does the board have that list at this no. time? No. no, I'm not showing that the board has that list. No, got it at home. Yeah, it's in our packet. Our our packet. Packet. Okay, yes. so if you're okay, then okay. All right, uh, Mike, you have it. Did this, are you looking? Yes, this? sir. No. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't have does that. Does anybody want to? Do you want I to have it now? Yeah. Okay. Pull it out. Perfect. It's in our packet. It's just not okay. Okay, so right now we have a recommendation for the uh, for requested personnel as presented in the board's packet. We recommend the board approval be be granted for the requested personnel as presented. That's not here, but it was in your mail out. Do I have a motion to approve the personnel? So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Lansford. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. McCauley. Any comments or questions? All in favor? All opposed? Abstain. Motion carries 6 0 with one abstention. Next we have. I have that one now. <laughs> we have the request to consider the approval of additional staffing position, district lead counselor. Yes, the academics, and this is largely in part to uh, House Bill 5, the district academic department is requesting a lead counselor position to develop a learning plan, coordinate professional learning opportunities for counselors, develop long term provision plans for addressing various social issues, etc. Position will also serve as a district testing coordinator for SAT, ACT, PSAT, and AP testing. The pay grade for this position will be admin pay grade two with a contract of 225 days. Uh, our district staff, uh, Mr. Mr. Alexander is not with us tonight, but Dr. Velos is. But in essence, what one of the things I can just tell you that we've learned is, is the counselors provide a critical service to our district and want to make sure we have, as we continue to grow in ag, camp ag campuses, we want to make sure we are giving the counselors all the leadership and support they deserve. Uh, we have more and more counselors than ever, and we want to make sure they're getting uh, a vertical support throughout the district with all the programs that we offer our kiddos and make sure that they have the resources they need. And therefore, we recommend that board approval be granted for adding staffing position for district lead counselor for the 13-14, I'm sorry, for the 14-15 school year as requested. Do I hear any motion to... Motion for additional staffing position of district lead counselor for the 20... 1415, right? 1415. 1415. 1415, not 1314, or we're starting it now. Just from now until the end of the year. From now until the end of the year, and then we'll ask for it in the next budget. So, needed. For now. Board approval for granted for additional staffing position as district lead counselor for the 2013-14 school year as requested. Yes, and then the... And that information was in our packet that was mailed. And the request will be included in the 1415 request. That position will be there when you see that later. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a motion by Mr. Hoyer? Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Tamini. Do we have any comments or questions? I have a question. Is this out of local funds or um, federal or where's it coming from? House Bill funds. And House what we plan on doing is um, that position is because of House Bill 5 with all the different strands and the uh, lots of requirements that were, are unknown to us. We need the support for our counselors, so it will be paid out of our House Bill 1 funds. For this school year and then next year we'll ask for it from the local local budget. funds okay. so that's state i'm sorry is that state the house or federal fund? there are federal funds that are given to us for um college and career readiness and this council will be helping us guide us through that path and what is the salary it's 225 at pay grade Two. I don't have that. Uh, we show it package. could possibly go as high as $83,875 total salary. Well, the salary is sixty nine eight ninety six, but benef benefits are thirteen nine seventy nine. That's insurance and such. So it's a total of benefits and everything is $83,875. it will be prorated for the remainder of the school year. Do you anticipate it hitting the high end? I don't know that we anticipate it hitting the high end because we don't know what candidate will find for that position yet but, but it, it won't they won't get that whole amount it'll be prorated for the the days they serve sure mm -hmm. that's also uh, according to this it's the average salary 69 eight, six. so it could be higher 
could be higher. I'm assuming average means Mill Road. Mm -hmm. Basically, and I want to make a correction, it's through state funds, but it is for career and college readiness. And what we do is we take the whoever that candidate may be and we look at their experience and it's based on their experience. So we calculate it based on that. So it usually we don't have people go above midpoint because the way the system works, there's very few people that get above midpoint, so it'd be somewhere in that area. What's the high range? I don't have it in front of me. Fred, do you have that in front of you? Mm -mm. No, I don't. I can get that for you. Don't have it in front of me. I'd appreciate that. One of the responsibilities it lists under that um, position is district guidance plan and campus guidance plan. Can you tell us a little bit about what those what those are and what they'll do? Well, uh, they will help coordinate a district guidance plan. Uh, and, and some of that has already been mentioned regarding many of the social issues that we're facing here in Alabama State, bullying, uh, drugs, alcohol. And so they will help develop a district plan. And then each campus, especially at the secondary level, is required to develop those plans. So they will provide guidance to the campuses regarding uh, that particular plan as well. And, and they'll they'll be they'll provide gu guidance or training to counselors regarding the new House Bill 5 all of that okay that's, the Very good. that's, that's gonna be the biggie are there any other comments or questions all in favor of approval for the lead counselor position for 2013-14 Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Next, we have the request to consider the approval of upgrade position, the Executive Director of Support Services to Chief Operating Officer. With the resignation of the Deputy Superintendent for Business and Support Services, the organizational structure of business and support services will change. Therefore, adding and reallocating responsibilities to the Executive Director of Support Services, uh, resulting in merit for an increase in pay grade and title change, status for the Secretary will be changed accordingly. Uh, our recommendations that board approve, approval be granted to upgrade positions of Executive Director of Support Services to Chief Operating Officer and Secretary for the 2013-14 school year as uh, requested. Do I have a motion to upgrade position? I'm sorry. <laughs> upgrade position of Executive Director of Support Services to Chief Operating Officer and Secretary for the 2013-14 school year as requested. So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Harris. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Tanini. Comments or questions? I have a question. I just want to try to clarify this in my mind. Uh, we, we are, uh, we are upgrading a position we are not creating another position correct yes so sir. if we're if we're upgrading two positions where so do we have a net gain or loss of one position we're going to take the current position and that in support staff and upgrade that one mm -hmm. but for tommy's position that one stays the same and there'll be a vacancy if for the next position. So we are upgrading and support personnel. Okay, you lost me there. Okay, on the support staff, we will upgrade that because he's going to take some of the responsibilities from the business office to support. So that will be an upgraded position. And okay. then we'll do away with the executive director of support? That's correct. That there will, will not, not be a replacement. Be. Okay. He'll keep the same responsibilities and add more. Okay. And no extra person. Okay. The other side, we're going to keep that assistant superintendent which will change the name to Chief Financial Officer, but we will have a vacancy if tonight's uh, recommendation is approved. Okay. Just, just tell me, are we gaining a position or are we losing We a are position? maintaining and upgrading. We're going to have the same number of people. So we're still going to, okay. We have yes. Mr. King resigned. Right. Retired. That will okay. Be which generated these changes. We have, and so we have two positions there that we are upgrading. Oh. We're upgrading one. Upgrading one. And the other one we're replacing, and we'll have the vacancy still. Mr. King's position so, is going to be filled so or not. So we basically have Mr. three. King's we position. have a net gain or loss of none. None. It's, they're still... 
So we anticipate there being, we'll possibly be adding so back later replacing. So how could we sit there and, and use funds from Mr. King's unpaid salary if that is still, some, we could hire somebody there. Yeah, what, what we're recommending is we, yeah, we're rec well, I'm, I'm going to cut you off, but what we're recommending is by moving this person up and taking the transportation police and, and those other departments and putting it with this one person, we would be move, moving that to a, an operations officer, and we would not be filling any new position there. We would just be moving that person up and adding these responsibilities. And then on the chief financial officer side, if the board approves the hiring of the chief financial officer, that will create a vacancy on that side. There will be a position left open on that side of, of the business office. And we don't have a recommendation to fill it yet, and we won't until we talk to the board about it later and see where we're going to go. So so what is the estimated net difference in total salaries? To be honest with you, because of the salaries and the experience of the people in those in those salaries, the cost will be 50. Okay. So the the CFO position is going to fill Mr. King's slot? Correct. And the COO is just going to be a brand new position with additional responsibilities? It'll be a, a, a person being moved up. But that Mr. It's King. It's a brand yeah. new position. It's in our district, it's an, upgrade. it's an upgrade. It's a brand new position in our district. We don't have a COO in our district. We renamed it. We're okay. Not, we no. didn't have one before. We have. We are proposing one now, right? Not a new position. We're renaming a position. Does that make sense? Uh, no. Okay. Currently, we have our executive director, and we're taking that executive director, and we're we're wanting to upgrade it. And rename that position to C C O O. An executive director we'll goes go away. away. Yes. Okay. And just adding more responsibility to that. Okay, person. but we did not have a C O O before. That Correct. is a new position in our district. It's an upgraded. It's a new title. I don't know how it's else to new, say. It's it. a new title. It's a it's new, new title. It's a new title with new responsibilities. Okay. Yes. But the old one goes away. Okay, okay. but it's new. <laughs> It's still new. It's a, it's a new title, yes, ma'am. It's a new title, and with additional responsibilities, and all the operational ends of the district regarding transportation, police, maintenance, grounds, building programs, etc. But the CFO becomes Mr. King's position. The CFO is Mr. King's position. On that side. So the side. assistant right. superintendent is going away. Correct. Okay. But there's going to be a vacancy. And so what I'm getting at is, is that uh, what is the money difference? Mm -hmm. Anybody know? We can, we can get that for you. We can, we can get, you, get you that information of what the money is difference will be. Before I we mean, vote on it? Well, I would like it before I vote on it. Wouldn't you like it before you I voted like on it? I would like it before I voted on it. I, I would like to see the, you know, just, just that up, upper tier the uh, the, the uh, uh, you know I understand your question, but if this question had been emailed, they could have had this information for us. <laughs> and you asking them to get that information right now is really difficult. These were the moves that we talked about when we discussed our organizational chart. And when Tommy retired, we didn't feel like that was the right, uh, with, with the size of the district, that we needed someone to handle the operations in, which would mean, like we've mentioned before, the transportation, the chief, the police, uh, the maintenance grounds, building programs, and so forth. But we felt like we had the capacity from within to handle that, that pro, those programs. We would just 
elevate that person's uh, uh, roles and responsibilities in the district, district. And because it's encompassing more of just building and maintenance, it's all things operations that aren't in the classroom and on budget that we would change it to chief operations officer. And on the chief, chief financial officer side, we would be moving someone up because we're taking, um, we'll be doing things like uh, insurance and payroll will come over to the chief financial officer's areas of responsibility. <laughs> And then, therefore, we don't see, uh, we feel like we're going to need to fill any vacancies that could come up if board approves hiring and elevating someone to the chief financial officer side. We would see that vacancy needed, which is why we're using Mr. Wells right now to do some other new projects and fill in any voids until we can find a permanent replacement for that position should the board approve the chief financial officer hire. That's tonight. And so that's, that's why it's being recommended this way. We didn't feel like one person could come in and take care of all those responsibilities um, from outside the district nor from within that we needed to split up to make sure we had better oversight and services um, because, you know, Mr. Mm -hmm. King retired with a lot of historical knowledge of the district and, and we have a lot of knowledge of the district in, as well and he prepared that staff well, we think, to, to, replace those, to replace him and meet those needs. So that's the approach we're taking. You've laid this out to us before. We've discussed what they were doing in executive session or something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my point is I understand where you're coming from asking for the difference in the salaries, mm -hmm. but at the same point, this is not new information for us. And my question to you would be why did you not ask for this? before tonight so that they could have been prepared and had that information. Because I asked for it in the executive session. I don't recall that. What we can do. You still could have emailed them the question. They could have found out for us. In this year's budget, we did not replace uh, Dr. Whitpeck's position yet, and we have saved money there on the budget implications, and we have saved for Mr. King's salary. And so we're not adding money to this budget um, for this recommendation, nor do we anticipate adding uh, you know, there being significant budgetary implications here. But when we do review positions and staff for recommendation for the 14-15 budget, uh, we will go over all those numbers with the board and with those positions. Any recommendations we have for additional <coughs> positions or redaction of positions. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we can also get a board, uh, get the board an email this week uh, with all the financial implications of this move. But it is not, we're not asking the board to add money to this year's budget by making these recommendations. What's the salary for this new position? Well, this it's one is... Eight. Pardon? If you're yeah. on there, right? On, 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 on item number 14, which we're, I mean 15 that we're on, it's uh, $139,023. Which is a change of how much? $21,850. And then, then there's a, a secretary also. What's the difference of All in favor of approving the upgrade and approving the upgrade position of executive director of support services to chief operating officer and secretary for the 2013-14 school year as requested. All opposed? Motion carries 5-2. What, what was the uh, what was the motion? Give me a The approval will be granted to upgrade positions of Executive Director of Support Services to Chief Operating Officer and Secretary for the 2013-14 okay. school year. All right. Thank you. Next, we have a request to consider the approval of administrative appointments. All right. Uh, we have – the board has a memo at their place. Uh, we have a recommendation 
uh, due to different resignations, retirements, and reassignments of administrators of new positions. We have recommendation that the board approval be granted for assistant principal at Mary Burke's Elementary, Mary Burke's Merrick Elementary School, assistant principal at Glen York Elementary School, chief financial officer, and assistant superintendent of human resources as recommended. Administrative appointments, the assistant principal at Mary, Mary Merrick Elementary, the assistant principal at Glen York Elementary, the chief financial officer, and the assistant superintendent of human resources. So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Stringer. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. McCauley. I would actually like to see if we could vote on them individually. Okay, so Are you making a motion? Like I'd like to make an amended motion. Amended. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have a motion, amended motion to vote on each one of these individually. Do we have a second? Second. second. have a second by Ms. Stringer. All in favor of amending the motion to vote on these in the, in the individually. Sorry. Charles, are you voting? Did you ask me if I was opposed? Are you opposed? opposed. Motion carries 6-1. Okay, so do we have a motion to approve the assistant principal at Mary Merrick Elementary? We have a motion to for Mary Merrick, Merrick Elementary. We have, um, there you go, Miss Dixie Jones. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Miss Stringer. We have a second. 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 Comments or questions? All in favor of assistant principal Mary Merrick Elementary? Motion carries 7-0. Next, we have a motion for the assistant principal at Glen York Elementary. We have Teresa Lair. <coughs> the motion to hire the assistant principal at Glen York Elementary, Ms. Teresa Lair. Thank you so much. I have a motion by Ms. Stringer. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Panini. <coughs> Comments or questions? All in favor? Motion carries 7 up. Next, we have a request to consider the Chief Financial Officer. Recommending CFO, for, uh, Ms. Susan Wilson. Motion, hear a motion for the CFO, Ms. Susan Wilson. So moved. So moved. <laughs> Jinx on y'all. We all Everyone moved. Everyone wants a motion. <laughs> Let's just do a, a joint. <laughs> motion by Ms. Stringer. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Harris. Comments or questions? All in favor? Motion carries 7 0. And we have the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Recommendation for Assistant Super of Human Resources, Mr. Daniel Combs. We have a motion to approve the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Mr. Daniel Combs. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. McCauley. Do I have a clear second? Second. Second by Ms. Tonini. I would like to ask if we could table this to have an executive dis uh, discussion on it. I think, Daniel, you're fantastic and intelligent and talented and all of those wonderful things. And I just feel like this is such a huge position. We're going to be hiring um, for a new elementary school, junior high and high school. And I just think that's a huge undertaking. And I myself would just like to ask some more questions before moving forward. As would I. Does that amend the motion? Or? Uh, is that a motion? Maybe that is the That's the motion, motion. motion. Mm -hmm. to ask to have an executive session. No, we had a motion. Are you asking to amend to amend? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. Second. No, that would be the. No, we had a motion and a second. Okay. Okay, amended motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think Sue. Who's second the amended motion? Sue second Sue. that. Who? Sue. 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 Okay. Comments or questions on the amended motion to table this to have an executive session? I'm not sure we can have an executive session. For what reasons? Right now? No, not no, now. No, 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 we would no. have it right. at That's the point. next yeah. available time. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow before workshop or mm -hmm. February. No, it's it's got to be posted. Yeah. February 10th, I think. 72 hours. Yep.
Ready and iconic. No. You gotta vote. So do you have to vote on the amended motion? We've been on the executive decision before we vote. I mean, I... The amended motion of the executive decision. What does it do to wait on this? Because I know we've already waited one month on this. I just feel like for me, I'm not ready to vote until I have um, a few questions answered that I would like to ask behind closed doors. And I agree. If if two two trustees have a hesitation, I have no problem of trying to get everybody on. That's just that's just me. And I think I think uh, uh, Daniel, I think that that's what you'd probably want also. I don't think that it's that we have hesitation about Daniel it's at all. It's that we all. want it's the a little bit further clarification on why Absolutely. we're going down that path, right? That's one of them. Yes. Yeah. 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 But no hesitation with you and your no. Such a wonderful. You have all the talent and intelligence. And, yes. And and you do a fantastic job. It's just I feel like this is such a huge position and. Um, this person's going to oversee three schools being hired and the teachers that are hired. And we have had some issues with teachers um, in the past, not many, but just with inappropriate comments to children, with theft, with, and I just want to know that those things are going to be curbed before we hire individuals. So I just, I have a few more questions before. And I just think this is such a huge position for the district and we're growing in leaps and bounds. And I just want to make sure that we get all the questions answered before we move forward, but no hesitation with you in general. I, if that's the reason we're doing it, I can support that. I'd like to comment on your question, uh, your your comment about uh, these things that have been happening. I can tell you this from a long experience with uh, teachers and their resumes and their uh, personal appearances with people. You're not going to find out some of these things Absolutely. until you right. have the facts. So that's Absolutely. that's not Absolutely. this is not going to solve that. Right. Okay. Right. But I can, I'm fine with the other. That's all right. Let's vote. Let's vote. Call for a vote. Okay. All in favor of the amended motion to postpone the hiring of the assistant superintendent of human resources to next month so that we can have an executive session. <clears throat> Motion carries seven no. And that brings us to you. If I can make this work. Oh, yeah, I don't have hey. to. <laughs> All right, we have our Alvin I C Rodeo Art Show. Um, gosh, Friday night, I guess, almost, I guess a week ago. Friday nights we're in together, maybe just this past Friday night. We had uh, the display at Al Manville High School. Amazing group of kiddos, uh, super talented students. Uh, the arts moving forward. Best of show winners were high school Aaron Knight at Manville High School, junior high uh, from Nolan Ryan, and uh, elementary was from Alvin Elementary. And we had our Sea Perch Challenge, which was a practice meet on Saturday. The practice meet, basically, I want uh, Senior Chief Johnson from, uh, I believe he has uh, kids in one of our elementary schools. I don't remember which one, but the Sea Perch programs come to our district this year. It's an amazing underwater robotics program where the Navy sponsors this projects where the kids uh, have to build an underwater robot uh, that can go through different hoops and also will course according to certain specifications, and they can do some of their own engineering and to make modifications. Turned out to be a great project Saturday. Like I said, it was a practice meet. The official meet is February 15th at the Pearland uh, Natatorium Center. And I'm not sure what the official name of that is, but we have the information we'll be sending out to the board. We have several teams from different elementaries, junior highs, and high schools competing. And it uh, looks like our kids are doing really well. And Senior Chief Johnson's helped us out a lot and give, 
that was giving the kids good feedback and good advice on their projects, uh, you know, sort of coaching them up, if, if you will. So hopefully they'll be ready for the February 15th competition. We'll get that information on the board. Hopefully you guys will show up and, and uh, see those robots. It's really, really a great program. Excited about that process. Mobile app, you can track your kiddos. I was asking my boys about the library books they had out the other day. Um, and I was so it's kind of neat to be able to see what library books your child has and, and everything you want to know about them on the mobile app. It's a great, great process. Daniel, uh, congratulations to you on a very successful launch, design and launch of that program. Uh, super job. And so appreciate all the work you and your team did to make that happen. And uh, we had our bond ratings coming in. Uh, Susan's here if you have any specific bond questions. But the actual rate on the fixed rate sale was 3.177%. Uh, we originally anticipated the possibility of going on the fixed rate of 4.61. And you can see there on the five-year, we were below those projections and the three-year and one-year as well. So that bodes well. We hope that will bode well for our tax rate down the road should we get continued value increase in values. But the lower interest rates for those bonds is, is, is a great thing. Um, I know when we were working long and hard on the communications and trying to make sure we were accurate but uh, conservative in our projections and we were trying to tell the community the implications of approving this bond election. Um, so we were uh, grateful for the opportunity to provide the schools and we're excited about the hopeful, the hopeful opportunity to overproduce on uh, the projections. So great work with Susan and your team. And uh, upcoming district functions, obviously the health and wellness fair. This has been going on for several years now. Always a fun event, the spelling bee. And, of course, we have the uh, total race coming up uh, on February 8th, but the spelling bee is February 7th. And so uh, looking forward to another great total race and the 5K front fun run last year. With the first year we had it, it was a great success. So 9 o'clock, we expect to see everybody out there ready to run. And the turtles start swimming at 12. So uh, you can adopt turtles. You know where to find turtles in the district. Contact Sheila if you have any questions. And uh, elementary 15, uh, you can see that elementary 15 is going up, and we're getting ready to hire a principal and get that school rolling. So uh, we have a lot of good work going on there. Jeff Cuvion and the team there uh, are doing a great job of getting that building going. They are ahead of schedule at this point in time. Uh, the main thing there is Missouri County is making progress on the project to widen County Road 59, which is much needed. And uh, so hopefully that a right turn lane will be off uh, of County Road 59 is in place <laughs> for the traffic signal and everything else before the start of school in August. So the, the, the widening of 59 is going to be a tight timeline, but the school uh, work on elementary 15 is moving along very well. And so appreciate the team for making that happen uh, on time and under budget again. So with that, that's all report. So moved. Motion by Mr. Lansford. Second. Second by Ms. Stringer. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries 7-0. We adjourn.